What are you drinking this time? What is that? This is chamomile tea because I'm sick. <laughs> are you sick? Yeah, I think I think it's not COVID, is it? I hope not. I'm going to get tested tomorrow because I don't because I'm because I'm a hypochondriac. Well, I'm not a hypochond. I just I don't want to I don't want to have COVID, and if I have it, I need to know. So every like six months, I get some sort of like exhaustion thing and oh. it's usually when I'm either right after I finish something really stressful or in the middle of something stressful so I think I've just been I don't know what's the stressful thing right now that's the good question so that's what I don't know what's I think I've just been stressed because you know what's stressful more. the pandemic is stressful it's a stressful time yeah I guess so I think also just like teaching on oh yeah you're teaching and you're still working and I got sick quite a lot but that was when I was working at LA Cafe. Mm, the yeah. Night cafe, and there's people all the time coming in and food yeah. and just constant yeah. enclosed space. Now, actually, during the pandemic, I'm like hardly ever getting. Well, sick. yeah. Well, that's my other I had thing. Food though. poisoning at one point, but. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing. Like, yeah, I got sick all the time when I worked as a server. But I'm wondering, like, how could I get sick if I'm like, I'm not seeing people? I'm so careful. Like, how could I get anything? But that's a good seriously, question. Seriously, like, yeah seriously like in in November like every six months I get something that is just like I'm pretty sure it's just my body's like oh you're gonna have to sleep for 12 hours a day for the next week and you have no choice and I'm sorry you're just gonna have to accept that and then I do and then I feel perfectly fine your body's like slow down Aya slow down. but like what am I doing that's so also I haven't been exercising so I think I'm just not as healthy as I should be anyways blah 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 so interesting I is unhealthy <laughs> uh no but you look great and that's what matters that's a lie but thanks I look how <laughs> I feel lie. you look good Josh if I didn't think so I wouldn't have said anything come on look at the look at my eyes look at them well you mean your eyes I, and you think that's no. comparable to these things look at these no, they're fine they're look fine at these yous. Also, I have to be honest, I'm going to tell you the truth, Josh. I'm using uh, the touch up my appearance thing. Here, look. This is the no, truth. No, is it makeup? It's not makeup. Look at this. Look at this. What? what? Look at my face. I guess there's some little difference, I guess. Oh, my God. No, look at the difference here. Boop. Boop. It, it Boop. just, it's like Boop. pretty filter is what you mean? Like Yeah, it's a pretty filter. Just, it doesn't actually make you, you look good either way. It doesn't. Josh, yeah. you're too nice. All right, I I'm can't handle nice. it's, your it's compliments. Like, Thank it's you. Too, Very nice. Okay, Let's wait, you know, on. you want to get down on, on yourself. On. Well, <laughs> no, you. say I look pretty when I look pretty, not when I'm sick and gross and I can see that I look how I feel. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I'm 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 seeing the world through sickness filter. So oh. everything is gross. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. What what is this? What's going on today? What are we talking about? Well, uh, I guess I should welcome everyone and tell oh, yeah. them what's going on right now. Oh, you should totally do that. <laughs> so uh, welcome back to Adulthood Friends. This is the discussion-based podcast where two former childhood acquaintances, now friends, discuss the things that... Crap, a second, I have a list of this. Wait, wait you, have a, you have a list of adverbs? <laughs> <laughs> discuss the things that unequivocally matter. Unequivocally? Un un unequivocally? Unequivocally. Unequivocally. <laughs> unequivocally. Man, that's a great, it's a great oh. adverb. It took us a little bit to get there, but, you know. Wait, do you, should I try it over one? No, that's great. I like it. Unequivo unequivocally. Unequivocally. <laughs> unequivocally or is it unequivocally? What am I saying? Unequivocally. unequivocally. I said unequivocally. <laughs> oh. <laughs> unequivocally matter. All right. Yeah, boom. So I'm sure that and, that, that, um, really, that really sold what the podcast was to people who've never listened to an episode before. <laughs> and what episode yeah. number is this, Aya? This is episode 12. And today our topic, so by second in popular demand, uh, is the topic inspiration. So we did a poll a few weeks ago to decide our next topic and habits and routines won, surprisingly, but that's what happened. And uh, a close second was inspiration. So mm. that's our topic of today. So, you know, what inspires you? Um, where our inspiration inf comes from? Where it comes from. Is there a muse? And I expect that this will be just as popular as our 
you know what? I won't assume how unpopular it might be based on you're in, previous you're in such episodes. A, you're in such, because of your like illness, you you're so down about I'll call it things. That. You know what? I'll call it that. Your illness. <laughs> My illness. I'm just. I have like a just a under the weather. Under, the, under the weatherness. Weather. Because of your under the yeah. weatherness, you know, we're gonna get you back to positive energy. This this episode because this is about inspiration. This is gonna be. I had it like two hours ago. I was inspired. Let's inspire you this episode. Yeah, inspire me. Let's okay. Inspire us both. Let's get inspired. And we're back. So Josh, you are known as being pretty prolific. <laughs> Where do you get your ideas from? Do you get them while you're walking down the street? Do you get them when you're sitting in a class, when you're talking to people, when you're watching a movie? Like what, when is it that you would get the most amount of inspiration, would you say? I steal them all. Oh, oh yeah, okay. They're all stolen. Yeah, that makes and sense. The thing is original. Yeah. Unsurprising. I don't get inspired by anybody. I just take, I just take their ideas and then call right. them my own. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. if, you know. I'm glad you're fessing up. I'm fessing up right here. So publicly. <laughs> But I'm actually just buying time because uh, mm. that's a big question. Where do I get my ideas from? It really depends, doesn't it? Mm. Right. So we're talking about you're talking about me being prolific as a, I guess, a filmmaker, as a, as a filmmaker. writer, as a writer. Um, yeah, as a anything. You have a poetry book. You have a bunch of stuff. I do. I have a poetry. Check, check this out. I got it right here. That's my Ooh. poetry book. Look at that. And uh, the artist. Oh, and the artist uh, Natanya Zaini. Yeah, she did her artwork for uh, for Adulthood Friends. She also did the cover yeah. of this poetry book and all the imagery inside. I really think the artwork is what elevates this thing. The poems or whatever, but the artwork oh, is great. So I'm sure the poems are yeah. awesome. You want to read us one? <laughs> read you a poem? Yeah, I'll read us a poem. You know what? I'll read you a poem. I guess I should read a yeah. shorter poem. What kind of poem do you want to hear? Yeah. Do you have like a limerick? I love limericks. I don't have any limericks. I don't I didn't put a limerick in here. <laughs> oh, you're kind of big. <laughs> you want one that's a little like, uh, like you want one that's kind of funny. You want some deeper, a little bit darker. Um, What's your, do you have a favorite? I, I kind of, it depends on the day, but one of my favorites is kind of long. So I don't want to read that one. The right elevator now. one? No, no, that was, okay. although that one, if we're talking about inspiration, the, there's this one called, I spend a lot mm -hmm. of time in elevators. Yeah. It's about how I spent a lot of time in elevators <laughs> <laughs> inspired by, well, when I was working that, that cafe, by the time spent in elevators. Well, I was working that cafe job, delivering food to like a lot of apartment buildings and hotels and mm. things. And in the middle of the night, you know, yeah. and there was like, a, just again, a, a mood to the whole thing. And I would, yeah. I just found myself spending a lot of time going up and down elevators. Yeah. Um, it's actually interesting. I actually made a movie once called Elevator that was inspired. Mm -hmm. It took place all in an elevator and it was inspired by me spending a lot of time in an elevator going up. And mm -hmm. I guess I just realize you realize when you're spending a lot of time in, in elevators. So your answer to the first question is elevators. That's where you're inspired. <laughs> Sometimes. Here, you, you should wanna... just invest in an elevator that you can just go up and down and do like do your writing in there and then people are coming in and out and you're like oh new characters because uh as long as i you know the elevator and the shower that's also a good one um, well there's that book too oh shower yeah that's a classic um the you know the follow-up to charlie and the chocolate factory oh yeah the grass charlie elevator the glass elevator yeah. yeah and it like goes out into space and stuff so that that's an option yeah okay you know what i'll take the second i'll read i'll read the very first poem from this book it's one of my favorites okay it's, okay. it's a little more fun than the others and it's it's not super short but it's not too long it might take a hmm. minute or two i'm into it it's called i'm gonna build myself a supernova i'm gonna build myself a supernova just get me a can of some sparkling soda i bet you it's not so hard to do when you toss in a match and a bottle of glue i'm gonna build myself an asteroid field just send me some stones a sledgehammer and a shield i'll build one much larger than any eye can see and be done before dinner i can guarantee I'm gonna build myself a solar eclipse. Just fetch me a flashlight and some poker chips. I'll build it much brighter than past days have been. So go leave your yesterdays in an old bargain bin. I'm gonna build myself a great big black hole. So find me a rubber band, some paper clips and a chewing gum roll. I'll build it to suck in the sadness and sorrow. Just watch I'll MacGyver it all by tomorrow. 
I think I'm going to build me a super space ship and feel it with the gloom of a bad relationship. I'll make it fly four trillion light years an hour with a whole built of thoughts that'll have infinite power. I'll soar through the skies past the blinding eclipse, maneuvering around other merciless ships. I'll take on the sun to a tolerable degree and fight off the asteroids pummeling me. I'll burst through the novas, both super and not, explosions so violent they'll scorch one's soul hot. I'll summon a bold daring temerity, then fly straight into a singularity. And over the horizon, I'll make an event and plow through a wormhole and make my descent. My ship's still intact, I'll come back to before. Perhaps I'll build heaven, be fun to explore. I'd build myself something smaller than all that, like a birdhouse or a poem or a bed for my cat. But ever since I met you, I stopped thinking small. So now the one thing I'll never, ever build is a wall. Whoa, that's awesome. Hey. I like that one. Yeah, by the way, the book is called Exploding Glass Staircase. Oh, wait, do we snap? Oh, I don't like the snaps. You don't like the snaps? <laughs> I'm not a fan of this the snaps. This is a poetry slam. Ah, I hate it. <laughs> I never understood the snaps. Is it just like less I think it's so, it's less, clapping? yeah, it's less obnoxious just apparently, like, but I find it more visually uh, obnoxious, whatever. It's very, uh well, yeah, because it's very douchey looking. Yeah, I'm no, it's not for you. I, I will. I'll, I guess I'll plug it right here if people want. It's called Exploding Glass Staircase, and you can find it on Amazon. Uh, if not for me, then for our artist Natanya Zaini. Mm. Yeah, and I was gonna say, so I really like. Um, I'm a fan of. I know this is. Well, I don't know if it's controversial, but I do like the rhyming and the rhythm. You had almost like um. Oh, I shall just, silver yeah, steam. I like sort of. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that it's. Uh, I didn't want to like. I'm a big fan yeah. of that stuff myself too. I mean, not all I, my poems do that. They're, they're very eclectic yeah. group of poems, and I can't tell you where mm. specifically I was inspired with that poem. Um, a lot of people heard this recently, and they're like, "Oh, Wall Trump." No, I'm like, no, nothing to do with. <laughs> no, it was like an emotional. I mean. Yeah. yeah, I wrote it long before that. But yeah. yeah, so it's hard to sometimes, but some of these poems in here, for example, I was inspired by, you know, relationships or even friendships. I had a I had a friend kind of betray me once and I wrote a poem about how I felt about that. It could be a really good, you know, that's that stuff can really be a good source of inspiration. It's true. So neg negative experiences you find are a big source of inspiration. Positive and negative experiences, but things that it's interesting. Do we do we call it inspiration if it's a negative, if it's a negative experience? Um, we call it negspiration, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's Sorry, exactly that what we call it. Womp womp. <laughs> yeah, it's still inspiration. I don't know if I answered your question, but I just read you a poem. I think it's still inspiration. Yeah. No, I liked it. It was good. It answered. Show don't tell, right? <laughs> Show don't tell. I know. I hope. Um, that, hopefully, that wasn't too long to listen to, but. Uh, I mean, other yeah, other things, I think, yeah. So if I'm in the shower, I like long drives in the car. If I'm just lying in bed, I get inspired by, I'm not one of those people that really gets inspired by, I don't think other like famous people inspire me as much. I'm not, yeah. there's a, maybe a couple of exceptions here and there. Mm. Let me turn it back on you. What inspires you to, I know you're a writer, you're a creator. What inspires you? A much less prolific one, I must point out. No, um, but no. yeah, I, I, <laughs> I guess um, I was trying to think about it. Like, so you said long drives for sure for me. Actually, particularly when I'm in the passenger seat, I don't know why. When I can sit, relax, and like stare out the window and kind of like you let your mind wander, but there's kind of enough that you're paying attention to, and there's music going. That's kind of an obvious one, I guess. Walking. Uh, like long walks actually are probably one of my favorites for inspiration mm -hmm. that gets the juices flowing right yeah and usually it it might take a little while like it'll be 20 minutes of like oh I don't know what I thought was going to happen but then like once I'm into it it's like my brain starts I'll be like okay I have all of this planned out and I'll go home and I'll write it out and yeah so it's like times when my mind is partially occupied but able to wander mm -hmm. and I shower is a good one I take ridiculously long showers Me probably too. partly because of that <laughs> yeah it's it's just the best I just it's that's again um, that's my meditation I told you shower yeah it's basically well yeah um actually so I don't know like music concerts actually tend to be really good oh. for that too like do you have a favorite musician that gets that like inspires you or a favorite type of music a favorite type of music I mean I have a favorite band who's your favorite band? um you know I've never oh um metric Metric. Oh, really? I love Metric. Yeah. Did I know yeah. this? 
Why are you surprised? I'm, yeah, I'm, not, I'm surprised because I, I, I was expecting it to be something that I didn't care for, but I like metric. Huh. <laughs> I love metric. I've seen them. <laughs> I've seen them in concert. Like, like they come to London a lot. They're from Toronto. Oh. I've seen them in concert. I'm sure they're, well, I don't know if they're responsible for some of my hearing damage, but at least part <laughs> of it. That was at least yeah. worth it. <laughs> What's your favorite metric song? My favorite song? Uh, I don't uh it's hard to say i mean i also like emily haynes solo stuff and right. um but maybe empty i i think i used that one okay. for my my alarm uh for a few years oh. and amazingly i'm not i still love it and there's like a newer um they call it the dirt road version but it's like a just a, a different version of of some older songs that they did and empty is still it holds up it's just always good i love that song so much and it's just like it starts out really slow so, and it says like the lyrics at the beginning are um there's no way out the only way out is to give in which is perfect for when you're waking up because it's like there's no way out you you have to, <laughs> you just, you have to <laughs> it out. sounds like you to got me, a was... real good like wake up this is like inspires you for your day yeah oh yeah that's true actually it kind of did because it was i think it's one of the few ways that i don't mind waking up because i'm like it's just uh, some of the most pleasant ways. One of uh, the most pleasant ways to wake up. It reminds me of my friend. Uh, <laughs> I remember him saying like after he had a, a breakup. I don't know if I said this before. Mm-hmm. Like, and then his alarm, it was like the radio. It wasn't actually an alarm he set, but the radio yeah, came on yeah. with the song. radio is great too. Yeah. Uh, you know that Bon Jovi, is it Bon Jovi? It's like, it was like, shut through the heart and you're yeah, that's blame, funny. darling. You give love <laughs> a bad name. And he like jolted awake to this. And yeah. He was like, oh, no. That's the problem with leaving it up to the radio is you never know. It's either going to be like awesome and you're like, wow, what is this song? I have to Shazam it. Or it's like, <laughs> oh my God, you just can't. I need to go back to sleep to recover from this. I, I have a question because I didn't say this myself yeah. either, but this is totally something that inspires. I mean, we're talking about, you're, you're kind of bringing up, um, you're bringing up places that we can help get us inspired. Right, right? yeah. But personal experiences in general are huge, right? Like you wrote a short story uh, I, I read recently that was definitely inspired by personal experience, right? Yeah, actually, I have to say you were part of that. Um, you were part of that short story decision because I think really? I made a joke. Yeah, yeah, I made a joke about like. So I mean, again, and I've talked about this before on the podcast, um, but when I when I started taking SSRIs or antidepressants, they made a huge difference for me. And I said, like, if only there were a way to get people who really needed them to take them. And I was like thinking of ways, like how would you get someone, how could you force someone to, I mean, this was something I was thinking about for a while, kind of jokingly, cause I mean, that's a whole, like, you can't do that to someone, but um, I made a joke to you about it. Like, yeah, if only I could get so-and-so to, to take this at the same time every day. And you said, that sounds like a good, that sounds like a good short story to me. Oh, really? Like, this oh, is yeah. what I said yeah. inspired you to write Or you it? said, that sounds like a good story to me. And I was like, oh yeah okay, great. It's mine. Don't it's uh, dibs on it. It's my idea. And you're like, yeah, I'm not going to take your idea. <laughs> and then I wrote it. So would you say that I'm one of your inspirations? Aya? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't want to say it. You don't want to say it. I don't want to say but that. But it happened at least I, I once. Have to, I mean, we've talked about self-expression before, and I have to yeah. say that the way that we are able to talk about that kind of thing is it can be inspiring. I often leave our conversations kind of excited to work on something or often just the way that you are prolific and I'm like okay Josh does it and I know that like you know it's we're not we're the same but like you know sometimes we put those people who who create things on like some pedestal like oh I can never be like so-and-so but then I'm like it's Josh we're friends we're the same if he can do it so can I <laughs> like no offense honestly I think you're touching on something here I do find yeah. some of my best inspirations, people wise, are my friends, people I know. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't, it's it's hard for me to be inspired by again some celebrity. But again, if my friends are doing something, that's incredibly inspiring. It's right there. You can, yeah. you can even talk to them about it. You can, right. you know, you can access that. Yeah. That to me is some of the the best inspiration you can get are the people around you. As long as you have a good positive mindset about it and you're not one of those people who gets like jealous or or whatever. No, no. I I mean I think it's it's a lot more uh, useful to be happy for other people and to like kind of let that energy like it's literally useful to be happy right it's actually useful yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah so what you were yeah so um yeah and what you were mentioning yeah it was based on experiences with people and I think often 
there are people that like interactions with people that give me an idea for a character for a I guess for a story or something sometimes it's actually kind of well you were talking about like negative experiences sometimes it's like if I'm really not enjoying my like someone's company I'm like okay at at least like I can occupy my brain by like turning you into a character in my head so mm -hmm. like if you're on a really bad day this is just a, a tip for anyone if you're on a terrible day just like turn the person into a character in your head <laughs> and be like what kind of character would they be what's their backstory so you get inspired by bad dates uh I wouldn't say I get inspired by it so much but I think it adds to like a character repertoire sometimes it, yeah sometimes I can get inspired by that like anything that's yeah out of the ordinary experiences in general right experiences like good yeah, or yeah. bad I think can be inspiring in fact it's nice yeah. to turn a negative experience into something that can inspire you because then mm -hmm. suddenly you can value a time that otherwise would have been just negative. It, it doesn't, it yeah. stops being just negative, right? Yeah. It, when it becomes an inspiration for something good. But that being exactly. said, you don't want to depend on just have, you don't want to be no. like, oh, I need negative experiences. Like, <laughs> No, I don't go looking for them, but it does help to make things not feel like wasted time anymore. So like if I'm somewhere mm -hmm. I don't feel like being, I'm like, well, at least, you know, I can kind of maybe I can get something out of it. Do you ever go like traveling or go somewhere in order to get inspiration? Do you ever think, oh, I'm going to go on this trip? I don't think I've done that intentionally, but I do think that anytime I'm out of my own space, I do get it, it is a lot easier to get inspired. Yeah. Do you think that helps like being out of your own space? Like, yeah, for is sure. That, is that yeah. something you would recommend to people if they're having trouble getting inspired? Like, we always hear about that. Ah, I can't mm -hmm. find the inspiration and they get stuck in there. I think work. that's a common one. I think that's a well-known one. People go travel. Which they can't do as easily now. During the yeah, pandemic, so I was going to say, right? I, I do not recommend doing that right now. Please stay home. Okay. Let's just, let's end this. And not skip. Well, you can go for a walk, right? Yeah, you can go for a walk. Just stay the hell away from everybody, okay? <laughs> Nobody wants... <laughs> Even I am tired of not being able to go out, okay? <laughs> but yeah, so traveling is a great one. Um, when that's possible, again, that'll be great. I think it depends what kind of traveling you're doing, but um, for sure. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a classic, even like the journey part. Like I feel like long bus rides, different things like that. They tend to be very um, conducive to inspiration. Do you have certain like in general, like heroes that have inspired you? Who are your heroes? Yeah. I don't think I have heroes. Like it's really hard. I was trying to think of that. I don't think I have but didn't you say you put people sometimes on a pedestal and right right but I mean well I mean we were already talking about this so let's I mean metric I, I love metric I I do love Emily Haynes lyrics as well oh but she's not like a hero to you she's not a hero because I've heard her speak sometimes and I'm like oh I love you but like sometimes <laughs> I don't I don't want to hear you talk so you always see the flaw you always see the humanity and you can't, you can't make them this heroic figure. I don't think it helps. Yeah. I think that what I like about people generally is not, it's hard to simultaneously like revere someone and actually understand them. If that makes sense. Like if you're putting someone on a pedestal, yeah, you probably, I don't know. You're probably not no longer really seeing them as human. And they're like yeah. a God to you. Like you shouldn't make your, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I agree. I don't love putting people on a pedestal, but I think you can still yeah. separate. Like you, someone could be a hero to you for something in particular. Like James Cameron is a, as a filmmaker, is a hero to me. He's not a hero Sorry. to me. I didn't as mean a, to as a, <laughs> why? <laughs> no, no, no. That's good. That's good. Okay. Well, yeah, so you wrong? James Cameron is great. He's no, nothing. I mean, I said Emily films. Haynes. I can't think of anyone right now. I don't <laughs> Steven Spielberg, heroes, though, yeah. I think is pretty, from what I know, is pretty wonderful all around. Mm -hmm. You know, I think as a filmmaker, he definitely inspires me. Uh, you know, music wise, Bruce Springsteen is probably my favorite musician. And also, like, that. as a person, yeah, you probably remember that even in like elementary in school. In elementary was, school, yeah. You loved <laughs> I, Bruce I liked Bruce Springsteen. It, it's great. I actually grew up and got to know more about him. Because sometimes you do that. You find out more about your heroes, quote unquote, and it turns out they suck. But in the case well, of like yeah, Bruce Springsteen, yeah. he turned out to be like he's a pretty, pretty great cool. guy. Yeah. He's a good role model. He he has good values. He makes great music. He's He also inspires me in that he keeps creating. Like he's what, in his 70s now? Mm -hmm. He's still creating and he's got so much life in him. And yeah, I find him to be quite the, uh, quite the inspiration. I mean, again, I'm not a singer. He's not inspiring yeah. me specifically to do what he does. 
Right. Yeah. Same, same with my example. Yeah. So I get inspired by him, but I get inspired by that music, even if let's say I'm listening to it and I'm writing. Yeah, exactly. Like I would get inspired by the music, not so much by the person. It's more, Mm -hmm. and I don't, yeah, I don't want to be friends with her. I don't want to meet her. I was thinking I like, while we're talking, I'm, I'm, I was trying to think, I think like I might've said JK Rowling or Rowling. I don't at one point. Oh yeah. I have, I even, I have that written down actually. Yeah. She's my, when it comes to authors, she's my favorite. And I think she is a hero to me and, or inspiration. Now, is she perfect? I think we can all agree. There's some things. Yeah. Well now it's, it's hard. Yeah. But I, I do, I do still admire some of the stuff she's done and I love the books that she wrote. So I'm sure we'll get into this in the, in the nuance uh, episode. You know what though? I do think that I mean, that's interesting. Like for me, I don't need the person to be perfect to inspire me. I mean, there's a line for sure. Like, I'm not going to tell you that Roman Polanski is an inspiration to me, Mm -hmm. considering what that guy did, you know, but um, I guess everyone has a different line. But I think I feel okay still saying that J.K. Rowling inspires me as a writer and creator of worlds and and a lot of things. And she doesn't have to be a perfect person to do that. Yeah, I know. I think that's a good way of putting it. And um yeah, I'd, I'd agree. And I mean, I like, have you read her, um, like the speech that she did at Harvard, I guess, uh, very good oh, lives. I read that. Oh, you should read it. It's great. It's, I, um, will it inspire me? Yeah, it will. It's a little, it's an itty bitty little book. I think I read it while I was like wandering through chapters or whatever. And it's just like, oh, libraries. That's another one, obviously, I guess. Or like reading. Mm-hmm. That's an inspiration. I forgot. Oh, you get inspired by library. I'm adding that so you back. were inspired. Were you inspired by the way when we were working at the library like the whole time? Because I was that was murdering me. That was <laughs> killing me there. <laughs> I mean sometimes, <laughs> but it's usually like so I love just opening books to random spots and like reading something. Oh, yeah. that's kind of I guess the back covers of books inspired me, but actually it was just sad because I'd get inspired and then I wouldn't it never went anywhere in the moment I would feel inspired and then I didn't use it yeah you got to go beyond the back cover though the back cover is marketing you got to open it to a <laughs> but that's all you could do page. when you're but when you're like working at the library you can't really get a good sense of all the books while you're working not all the books no but you see a book and you're like oh that's interesting and then you whatever it's fine I don't know, that was such a good job for you I love that job <laughs> yeah um but yeah so coming back to the um very good lives speech it's interesting because she talks about how um you know she took classics in in university and like how she didn't expect whatever I'm not gonna I'm gonna butcher it if I try I highly recommend that you read it I'm sure you can find it online very easily so and it's a short little thing yeah. so I'll yeah. check it out yeah yeah read that okay rolling I mean again she's written some of my favorite just words <laughs> yeah and uh put yeah. to a page ever so I mean I I the, I don't usually reread books, but I reread a bunch yeah. of Harry Potter books. That's, you don't usually reread books? No, I'd rather read something new. You know, I know, everyone I have says ch- that. We have, so, we have so little time in life, I, I feel. Know. That's what everyone says. I really, like, I have, I know this is an inspiration, but I need to, because I have, like, mixed feelings about that. I'm always telling myself, no, no, you should read something different. But don't you ever just want the feeling that you got when you were reading that book? that you know you're going to get it's comforting but are you going to get it those diminishing yeah. returns right no i still get it i mean there are certain there are very few things again i did reread harry potter right like, like so I said, why but i like to at least give it a lot of time so i've forgotten mm. the more you forget about it the more you can ex- kind of experience that again right. but i get a little sad because i'll never be able to totally experience it the way i did the first time yeah but i actually i'm not a plot person like i I care more about character development and stuff. So sometimes I'm relieved that I know how things are going to end. So I can mm. just relax. And really enjoy. like the first time I like to be on the edge of my seat, but the second time I'm like, now I can just coast. I don't have that. Like, Oh, I have to keep going. I have to keep reading. So it's just comfort. It's just it's comforting just comfort. for you. Yeah, yeah. I see. I mean, I guess like I'm, I'm rewatching my favorite TV show of all time right now. What's your favorite TV it's, show of all time? Uh, it's uh, Stargate SG one. <laughs> Oh, yeah yeah laugh idea. I don't care yeah. it's great it's fantastic <laughs> I'm it's not laughing best. It's... okay yeah there's there's the reason there's 17 seasons Josh, and multiple movies to this franchise <laughs> can I clarify why I was laughing I'm not laughing at what you said because I I've never seen Stargate all I know is that as soon as you said it and anytime you've said this before you get super preemptively defensive. defensive preemptively defensive yeah you're preemptively defensive clearly people have jumped on me about this because I went to film school and 
I, I, okay, if I had to tell you what's the best TV show of all time, and yeah. which also inspired me, which was, you know, I'd say Breaking Bad, you know? I mm -hmm. loved Breaking Bad. I think it's the best. But just pure, like, favorite, the one that gives me that comfort, you mm -hmm. know, the one that um, makes me feel this sense of wonder that nothing else does. Yeah, Stargate. Stargate yeah. did that for me growing up, and it still does that for me now, and I'm re-watching it with my girlfriend. Oh, that's nice. And I'm having the time of my life. That's yeah. awesome. I have nothing against it or even thoughts of it. I think the like I've only heard about Stargate from you <laughs> and always like preemptively defensively saying it's not Star Wars or Star Trek, which neither of which I even have a problem with. I was laughing at you <laughs> for your reaction to my novel. You're the straw man yeah, I'm lashing out at. Creating a... Yeah, I get preemptively defensive because I do. I love it and I, I have no... I, I won't apologize for it to anyone else. I guess I don't have to with you. Um, I'm not making you apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not with you. But I mean, I do. It's a, it's a, it's a show that induces the sense of like wonder in me, and I do. I actually do get inspired when I watch it, and I have rewatched it a lot. And it's one of the only things I've enjoyed rewatching. I think because when something does inspire you, when you return to it, it it's you can return to it for inspiration. You know, right. I don't do that with a lot of things, but I do do that with Stargate. So that one is a, you know, show wise for me is a big one. Yeah. I recommend everybody watch Stargate. Stargate yeah. SG-1. It's fantastic. What's it on? Like uh, Netflix? Crave. You could stream it. It's on Netflix. It's I just got Crave. And I think I'm, I was planning, I haven't seen Game of Thrones yet. And I feel like- You haven't I'm seen Game of Thrones? Yeah. I've seen the first. I'm sure you've heard this every time you say that. Yeah, that's why I said yes like that. I've seen the first season and a bit of the second. Um, I'm not big into gore. I actually uh, actively dislike it. So I kind of close my eyes. I also. I mean, there's definitely gore in the show. I can't tell you that there isn't. Like, well, the thing is, I, I also tend to watch TV before I go to bed. And I, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but I I'll give tend you to nightmares. have. Yeah, I have extremely vivid dreams, just that baseline. So it's not necessarily night um, nightmares, but it's like, I don't really feel like dreaming about people cutting off other people's heads with swords. Like, that's not my, <laughs> that's not my favorite. So oh, I'm sorry that that gets in your, in your head. Like no, that. it's okay. I mean, it's, it's cool. Cause it clearly the, like, I can tell when I'm into reading or like something good because my, I'll, I'll have much more, I'll have even more vivid dreams. So like, yeah. It's good that it's able to do that, but it's also not great. So, well, I used to be able to say that Game of Thrones was like one of the Appreciate best shows it. ever made, but it did end pretty with the last season. Yeah, badly. I've heard, I've the last season things. just they rushed, they rushed it and ended, it ended in a way that was very unsatisfying. Yeah, I've heard. I partly haven't watched it yet because I didn't want to get attached to a character that they would kill. I get very attached to characters. Oh. I got, I get so upset. Even when I reread Harry Potter and <laughs> dies, I get... Excuse, like, spoiler alert. <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> Who hasn't read it? Okay. <laughs> when I read Harry Potter and beep dies. What if children are listening to this and we just ruined... Well... I'll just bleep it. Just bleep it. Yeah. Because I care about spoilers. I hate spoilers. You know I hate it. I know you do. We've had this. I don't care so. how old the thing is. If you can avoid spoiling something, I appreciate it. I agree. I agree. So you were saying? Oh, I was just saying I wanted to make sure that my favorite characters on Game of Thrones weren't going to die. And I still haven't gotten straight answers from people because they'll be like, do you really want me to tell you? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I want to know <laughs> that like, I'm like, you don't want to know. I mean, you don't want to know, really. But... I just want to be able to enjoy it without worrying that like. But that's part of the show. It's that. true. You do have to, I, not I knowing what's going to happen when, the unpredictability of it is part of its charm. Life is unpredictable. I don't need my shows to be that unpredictable. <laughs> no, that's not. You would love Stargate. You should watch Stargate as you want. <laughs> I probably would. Honestly, if you were going to ask me what my favorite show it's is, smart. I, probably, I would have said Futurama. So, I mean, like, oh, it's not you that. Know, Stargate, people compare Stargate and Futurama sometimes because Stargate really? has such a sense of humor. Look at us. Uh, Two nerds. It. Yeah. Look at how nerdy Look we at are. It. I don't. Yeah, you know what I have? Again, no shame. It's a smart show yeah. written for smart people and right. has great morals and it doesn't take itself too seriously. So Nice. Yeah. Is it funny? Because um, comedy... It's incredibly funny. People watch it because it's very funny. Okay, then I'll watch it. All right. It's added to the yeah, list. It's, it's just short of being considered a comedy, I would say. It's also dramatic mm. and stuff, but it'd be very, very okay. funny. I've been watching Black Mirror lately. It's really great. That's not funny. It's not, but there was <laughs> one that was funny, but... 
but I have only seen a couple episodes. I don't want to be spoiled. Again, I won't see things like Black Mirror because, I mean, I, I will. I, I do want to, but it's, I know it's like overall depressing. There's like oh, yeah, so one or two episodes that are not. I should clarify. It was depressing, but there were moments of funniness, right. of hilarity. At some point, I'll check it out. <laughs> like two <laughs> seconds of something funny and then super depressing. <laughs> so you don't watch depressing things? I know this has just turned into shows. I do. I do. I, I If I know they're depressing, I don't. I have trouble wanting to watch it. I need to not know ahead mm. of time. You need to be tricked into watching something depressing. I like to be surprised either way. If yeah. I know, I, I call that an emotional spoiler. Oh, and, whoa, yeah. that's so cool. I've never heard that before. That term. Those are that worse thing? to me. If someone tells me, I'm not going to tell you what happens, but it's super sad. I'm like, no, that's that's worse. That's even uh, worse. Not knowing, like, if they tell me how I'm going to feel. You know what? I agree with you. Because also, when they tell you stuff like that, then the whole time you're like, is this a sad part? Or am I supposed to be feeling sad and I'm not? Why would that person feel sad? It's like, I didn't want that. I just wanted pure experience of this without exactly. all your bullshit yeah that's true exactly that's, that's how a I feel that's a great way of putting it emotional spoilers did you yep. coin that term can we have a whole I episode on emotional I spoilers like... on time <laughs> I feel like that's I can't say I coined it it's not that specific a thing uh I'm sure yeah, people maybe. have said that before well you just have to put the words together and make it like emoilers and then I like emerging words emoilers it's emotional <laughs> <spoilers>. <laughs> <laughs> Are you uh, there's probably impressed? a better way to put that together uh <laughs> no, no there i i but i enjoy you try it's very entertaining <laughs> to hear you try it's funny because you like doing that but you don't like puns anyway I hate puns. Uh, <laughs> yeah yeah that's you know there's people who are offended by you not liking puns we're going so off topic okay so i have a question wait whoa 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 <laughs> pause you have a question i know who is offended by me not liking puns me <laughs> Oh, I, uh, that was. But seriously, are there other people? <laughs> I'm sure if I am, there's got to be other people. I mean, no, the way you are, said it. Puns are everything. All right. <laughs> puns are. What they are, are top saying? tier humor. All oh, right, God. top tier humor. I'll say. I'll say this about puns. I appreciate like the process of it. I like. I like watching someone think of it, and I'm like, oh wow, that's great. But for some reason, the joke itself, my only response is generally like, uh, I don't know why. I don't know. Because you're too pretentious for puns, I think. I think it's Fuck uh... you. Did you just call me pretentious? <laughs> Did I? Was that the meanest thing I've said to you? Um... <laughs> some people are proud of their pretension. No, I'm not pretentious. I'm, I'm down to earth. No, uh, I wish your face was. Sometimes the faces are just like indescribable. Do I need to like? I mean, I'm poking fun a little bit. You're only some. No, 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 pretentious. no, no. It's okay. I want to hear it. I, I need to hear. We're all pretentious stuff. sometimes, right? Yeah, my mom. Oh, she. Okay, I'm not gonna censor this. She's just gonna hear it. She did at one point. She when I was younger. I mean, I was kind of pretentious. She called me a snob because I was like a literature snob, a music snob. I was like, you listen to bad music. And I mean, to be fair, I was insulting everything she liked. So, so um, <laughs> I guess I- Well, you know what? So you're a little triggered by that. So when I, when I said- Maybe, that, maybe. I'm I, sorry. I am, no, no, I am. I like to think that I'm equal parts pretentious and silly and that they even each other out. So like, for mm -hmm. example, my cat's name could be seen as pretentious, except it's also cute and funny and silly so you like it's a what is your cat's name again leonora kiddington <laughs> leonora leonora kiddington leonora kiddington so leonora it's, kiddington yeah so she's named after the artist leonora carrington and i changed the carrington to kiddington because she is a kitty and That's i just cute it's cute but it's also like a little yeah. pretentious i named her after an artist that nobody most people have not heard of and uh it's a really long name and you know she's got a first and last name and all that but i i mean i think it's mainly <laughs> cute but yeah obviously it's very cute and you know what you're allowed to have your i mean I, when i went to usc i remember even i knew i was going to be surrounded by all these like pretentious film people and there's mm -hmm. a bunch of them there yeah but are you not one of them I'm like i'm not oh. offending no i'm oh. very against pretension i'm very yeah. 
Again, well, clearly, I love Stargate SG One. You, you said know? James Cameron is your favorite director. That's the least. He's not my favorite. You could have he's said not my, he's not necessarily my favorite director. I mean, Spielberg's <laughs> probably my favorite director. That was, but, just uh, a, that was pretentious one of my on my part. What's wrong with James Cameron? He made well. He's he just like a brilliant films. Isn't he mainly known for like special effects type things? Like that's his thing. He's got great visual effects in there, but his films are again some of the high, highest rated movies. You know, uh-huh. Terminator One and Two. Uh, the abyss okay titanic yes he did titanic which is also mm-hmm. still a great movie i actually haven't seen you it no he did aliens you never seen titanic i actually haven't seen any of the movies you mentioned so oh wow so you were just that's that's the that's pretentious <laughs> right there <laughs> i'm just basing it on what i think I'm so, I uh no, no I, I just I, I just believe in like what you like let people enjoy things i, I don't like want to you know what i mean people things affect people differently they inspire people in ways we don't even Ooh. know look yeah. at the way i kind of weirdly yeah, that brought was that very back. sneaky yeah you're even making sneaky shoulder moves yeah but that was our longest tangent ever and i don't care i don't uh, care it was fun <laughs> but i have a question for you which i i want to oh, wanna... can i agree with you first <laughs> okay <you> agree <laughs> I, want, I agree i think everyone should like i i used to be more of a snob that's why i want to distance myself from that and i don't think i'm as pretentious now because yeah my knee-jerk reaction is to be like James Cameron he's known for special effects who cares yeah. but like really yeah enjoy what you enjoy you know I've spent enough time in academia to be like nobody cares about this lobby whatever it affects nobody's life so I don't care how amazing you think it is if nobody likes it it's clearly like it has less whatever I was just saying I agree with you everyone should like what they like I appreciate the agreement well don't appreciate it just know that I agree you know that meme on the internet that's like let people enjoy things and it's like oh no i don't know like someone it. grabbing this other person's lips and like shutting them to be like oh Shh. that's nice yeah <laughs> be quiet okay. yeah like we all need some enjoyment yeah i feel like <laughs> ask me your question at this point you're aggressively steering away from the topic <laughs> <laughs> aggressively tangenting tangent yeah tangent ten- 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 there's no verb here why not can you verb Why that? Why can't make tangent that? be a verb? I'm aggressively Let's tangenting. discuss this for the next 30 minutes. It should uh, be a verb. <laughs> I think any any noun should be able to be a verb. If adulting is a verb... You should contact the dictionary and let them know. No. Okay, so Do you know how the dictionary gets words? People use them enough. People, it's true. That's and then true. it gets if in you the just dictionary. say them enough. It's true. Yeah. Uh, one of those words is inspiration. <laughs> Terrible <figure. laughs> <laughs> oh is that what our topic was okay okay. the okay. topic is inspiration okay i want to get back to something a little more personal here okay i want to know who some of the first people that inspired you were so like you know parents teachers were you inspired by by them are there any like well are there any parents you have two parents but like <laughs> did your parents or are there any teachers uh for sure that you want to discuss that have inspired you For sure. And I mean, I feel a little weird mentioning people because I won't be able to mention everyone. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously, my parents, my mom taught me to read when I was really young. And I'm always like really grateful for that because she let me, she like gave me a window into the reading world very early. Yeah. Which um, was awesome. By the way, can I just say it's weird because I can also say your mother because she was my teacher. I can, oh, I can yeah. think of things, you know. We can all say her. <laughs> she yeah, inspired me. You know, it's yeah. interesting that we can both say that. Watch this episode. She won't even listen to it. Well, <laughs> I mean, I still think it, it's honest. I'm not just saying it. Yeah. Listening. Yeah. I mean, within my family, like, you know, my older brothers, especially, I mean, especially now with uh, one of my brothers, we, we talk about, you know, writing and stuff like that. Like he's more artistically inclined. So we'll have some discussions about that. And when I was younger, especially, I'd say, like, one of my uncles is very, like, into writing. Like, he was one of the people who would get me, like, some of the first writing books I have. Actually, I wanted to, I had a quote from a book. And actually, he bought me this book, like, years ago. Um, And I have a bunch of books from him. And, yeah, and, like, talking about it and talking about characters. Like, um, so I think in terms of that stuff, like, he, he would have been one of the top inspirations, but I mean, that's just family in terms of teachers. Yeah. And actually this is a little bit of a weird, of a weird one, but I swear Mrs. Delaney in some ways did inspire us. Like she, I was going to jokingly ask you that, but I, I guess well, she inspired me to love Harry Potter. Yeah. She read Harry Potter to us. She did like reading. And she, I think that was one of the things that 
like she and I got along with was I loved reading and she was like oh yeah great and well, we do um, have to mention for people who are just checking in oh now, yeah Delaney is a teacher who kind of terrorized us yeah and we've mostly just spoken terribly of her so now this is a mostly. strange yeah um but no I remember I actually had a little I like I had run out of I, I read all the Roald Dahl books when I was little like and then I, oh, I ran Roald out Dahl. of, yeah, I loved Roald Dahl. I know he's, that Oh, yeah, okay, by the way, as a person, I know he's yeah, anti-Semitic. turned out he was super anti-Semitic. I <laughs> shut up, but. Um, I know, but see, you can still be inspired by his work. It's, I, look, yeah, we're Jews, but we could still be like. Yeah, I mean, right. if Jews had to not be inspired by every person who was anti-Semitic, we'd have no <laughs> We have no <nobody. laughs> Who do we have Good one? point. Um, so I, I had read all the books and I was, I asked her like, oh, hey, like can you recommend more books for me? This was before like the internet was the place to get recommendations for everything. And I remember she wrote, mm-hmm. she had like perfect, that perfect teacher writing. And she wrote yeah. on this little- Perfect piece evil of paper. teacher writing. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote on this little piece. This is an example of when she wasn't evil, Josh. So um, she, oh, she wrote this is like, Wasn't she basically Professor Umbridge from Harry Potter? No, <laughs> she's not that bad. She's not that bad. <laughs> Professor Umbridge, like, no, not quite. Not quite, but I. I like how that was like the cruelest thing I've said. <laughs> I feel like that was a cruel. That's the like, worst that thing. Was, that was that was a line too no, far. No, Professor like, you, Umbridge. You were like, you you said it's good that she's dead, but I said she was like <laughs> Professor Umbridge. Oh you're like, wait, Josh, wait. <laughs> I actually, feel bad that I said that. I, I thought I said that. I didn't. I didn't say it's good that she's dead. You said she's dead, and I said good. Oh, that's so much different. <laughs> <laughs> it's related, but it's slightly different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm loving this episode this is a great episode <laughs> uh, i'm so sorry the people who wanted to hear about inspiration are instead here well they know what they were getting into. maybe for, this but, episode um, will inspire them and that's really what this was about yeah they'll be like if this is what a podcast is i should just do this oh yeah so i had this little piece of paper from mrs delaney in i remember i had it like in my little wallet for years like the the authors that she suggested i didn't actually mm-hmm. like any of them except for judy bloom i think but yeah. um but it was cool. Like I had that and it, it did, it got me into Judy Bloom and then I got into other things. So, I mean, yeah, I'm partly, I want to even out like the, <laughs> what I said about Mrs. Blaney, cause like she did have her really good sides too, in terms of, but in terms of other teachers, I think really like, do you remember much of, um, we called her Maura Janet? We should have to say like all of our Hebrew teachers in Hebrew yeah. school, we called we, we call them we wasn't like mi- the English teachers we would say miss or mrs or yeah. mister and then their last name but in Hebrew we would say mora or more which is like teacher or mister or mrs right yeah it's weird and and then their first name yeah so we would say mora Janet although technically she was a, yeah technically she was an English teacher but I don't know why we still called her that but yeah Mora Janet uh was definitely like a big inspiration for me because she I mean she got us to do like a writer's journal and she was just like to be honest, I think if I picked a favorite teacher, she would have been it. Like she. Whoa! I'm sorry to your mother. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> my mom is different. She was my teacher in life. She can't just be reduced to my. You're you're not you're well, you're basically not you're not. Of course, not nice including word. my yeah. own mother. Yeah, obviously not including, not including my mom. Um, no, my mom taught me when I was like she was always my teacher. So it doesn't like yeah. her as my teacher in school is not. It's just superfluous. But like, yeah, no. Um take out the word superfluous that now I sound pretentious no I love that word (laughs) (laughs) oh god so yeah like she got us to write she was just I don't know I felt like she really cared and I mean I like I mean teaching is what I really like doing and I think she's one of I mean you do teaching did you have teachers that inspired you to to, did she inspire you to teach I don't know that she I mean again that would probably be my mom and my uncle who are both teachers right but like everything that we did in her class, I remember more than most classes. Like I remember all the, mm. the things that we did. She's, she was the one who started us with a writer's journal. And I think I really kept mm. that up. And she did. Uh, she was a great teacher. I do remember. She was even a, a wonderful the, teacher. She and she was the principal us. for a reason too. She was, she was good. And yeah. she also, remember we built, it was in her class, right? Where we built a castle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Our whole, our whole class built yeah. a castle together. Yeah, I, that was one of the coolest experiences I remember. Yeah, it was grade four. Her and Mora Linda was also great. I like, I love Mora. Oh Linda. yeah, Mora Linda. This is funny. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, she, she also taught me the word. This is just funny because we always mention empathy. I remember her explaining to us the difference between empathy and sympathy, oh. and I just for some reason 
when I think of the word empathy for the first while, I always pictured more Janet explaining the difference between empathy and sympathy. I was like, oh. I want to reconnect with her. I really would love to. Oh, she's cool. I'm sure she's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I remember now. her being a great teacher. Yeah. Um, how about you, Josh? Who inspired me? Yeah. Teachers, parents, uh, parents. siblings. I mean, yeah. Teachers. I mean, I was, I, I'm in, I was inspired by my parents for different things, right? Yeah. You know, my mom actually was a teacher once upon a time, too. Oh, yeah. And um, so she, you know, she cared a lot about, you know, how I performed in school and inspired me to do well mm-hmm. <laughs> in school. You know, she, she, she inspired that a certain, I, I would say, curiosity in me, mm. uh, which, which is great. Uh, my father, yeah, I, he inspired me to do a lot and not necessarily consciously. It's not like he, he pushed me in any direction, but just, you know, he was a forensic psychologist. He inspired me to, uh, to understand the brain more mm. and how, how people think, how people work, how people develop and grow. And, you know, I ended up in developmental cognitive neuroscience was my mm. undergrad degree. Again, I love saying that. And uh, <laughs> we're all very <laughs> impressed, Josh. I exactly. No, uh, yeah. You are it's impressed. a little pretentious uh, that you're always saying it, but it's so pretentious. I love it because it's, but I, of course, I'm making fun too because I can't just let it be. Yeah. Um, no, it's cool. It's a cool <laughs> thing that you did. It's fine. I'm just, yeah, uh, it just sounds cool. But yeah, I was inspired, you know, you know, even <laughs> sometimes in, in ways that were less helpful to me, like I was inspired to talk about psychopaths all the time in elementary school and stuff because of my dad (laughs) you know I would just whatever he would I heard from him at home I would I would take to school with me that is an interesting topic it is I mean I ended up making a movie called psychopath for a day you know Mm -hmm. and a bunch of as I've discussed before movies on the cost of personality disorders and the quadrilogy that you well I turned it into a feature anthology film called the cluster b quadrilogy yeah I have a question have you read the book the psychopath next door I've been meaning to. I haven't. No. It's all about how there are tons of psychopaths, but I think you would probably, if you're going to read a book. I know thanks to my dad, like one in 50 people are a psychopath. Okay. And so, you know, things like that. I mean, my dad is more, I think he always focused more on the nature side of things. I think sometimes Mm -hmm. we differentiate like a sociopath is somebody who that's more nurture and psychopath is more nature, right? You know, sociopath may be developed because of environmental influences but it's usually i think a mixture of things maybe as an environmental factor triggered it anyway whatever i didn't know that wow yeah there's a whole lot of stuff to that and of course people don't say psychopath anymore so much as the Mm -hmm. legitimate definite uh, legitimate description they say antisocial personality disorder Mm. you know we just kind of say psychopath okay but anyway yeah so my dad inspired me to get into all of that stuff and then you know not just in my academic pursuits you know, psychology and neuroscience, but I've taken that and used that in my filmmaking and my writing. You know, Psychopath for a Day was actually a short story first. Mm. I wrote it as a short for, um, I guess it was a short story class in my undergrad that I took. Mm. So it just, you know, this stuff has kind of persisted throughout my life. So that inspiration mm. is still there. So that's my parents. Teacher wise, yeah, I mean, different teachers kind of inspired me to do different things. I I have less memory in elementary school, but interestingly enough, our preschool teacher, is it preschool? No, our kindergarten, sorry, kindergarten teacher, Maura Shani. Oh yeah, she was sweet, yeah. Shani was so sweet. Um, she was just, I'm not sure how to describe how she, in, she inspired me and, and motivated me, but I just remember she was such a positive influence on me. She was just like the sweetest person and really supportive. And it gave me a lot of confidence. I remember from the very, very beginning. And yeah, people like that can really change your life and and put you in a positive direction. In high school, I had my drama teacher, Mr. Wintercorn, Mm -hmm. was hugely inspirational to me and getting me into, you know, performing arts and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's also professors, I think, that have been you know, inspirational. I had the one who who taught us about empathy. Mm-hmm. I had an empathy professor. The guy who liked you even though you were always late. Or he liked exactly, you because exactly. you were always late. Yeah, yeah exactly. He was, yeah. um, I mean, I don't know, hugely inspirational, but it definitely, you know, inspired my, it further inspired my interest in, in things like empathy. Mm. You know, it's one of the, uh, empathy to me is still like the most important, like human traits, the thing I value the most. Mm. So yeah, parents, teachers, I think, those are 
going to be some of the most uh, inspirational people in your life and you Mm -hmm. but I I do have a question then like what is we've used the word inspiration but we also use the word influence Mm -hmm. is there a difference between inspiration and influence that's a good point actually I'm trying to think now maybe some of mine were more influence than inspiration like like I was highly influenced by my my by both my parents then and by my by family members I'd say the most well, what's the difference there what's the difference between uh, inspiration and influence um yeah that's a good question maybe in the sense that we're talking about I'd say they're we're kind of saying the same thing like influence is maybe a bit more neutral kind of a, like you can right you, it's just uh like the inspiration has that positive yeah. element to it that that kind of mental stimulation right mm-hmm. whereas influence is someone something happened that led you to do something it could be negative or positive like you could be influenced to do drugs I wouldn't say you're inspired (laughs) necessarily (laughs) no you're right actually that's a really good way of putting it it's really it's really just the connotation if if it's a negative or positive connotation I mean influence could Mm -hmm. be either but inspiration is generally a positive um, connotation to it that's a good point yeah Yeah. that's interesting to uh to think about that because yeah when I It's important to define these a little bit, I think, so mm-hmm. we have a better understanding. Yeah. So when we're talking about inspiration too, like some people will refer to inspiration as a muse. What's Reminded a muse? me. Oh, well, they had the nine muses in ancient Greek mythology. I mean, I've heard that, people say the word muse, but like but what is specifically a muse? Well, the idea is just that it's it's the inspiration. It's just like an embodiment of inspiration. Like the band but, muse? <laughs> that's a great band, but... Um, <laughs> it's a good band. No, it's uh, yeah. I guess it's a good band. A lot of their songs sound the same. Who knew we like so much of the same music, Aya? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, you're the one who assumed that I would just mention someone you didn't like. You probably thought I'd say I, I do really like Radiohead, but I didn't. I Radiohead's good too. Not into Radiohead. I like Radiohead. I know they're good. I know they're good. I didn't. I mean, I love. I don't like. know a lot by them. I know Creep. Oh well, that's then you know nothing. Um. Okay. <laughs> 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 I love it. I love it. No, there was one song you introduced me to, by the way, a while back. Not introduced me to. There was this band you used to like when you were younger. I think when we were like working at the library, maybe, and you were driving me back sometime. Was it then? And there's a song by the this band that you said was your favorite at the time. My favorite. My favorite band has been Metric for since high school. So I. No, don't know well, there was. Man. This was one of your favorites, I guess. Or maybe it was just on the radio and you said you. Maybe I liked just it. liked them. Yeah. What is this? No, I, as soon as I say it, you'll be like, oh. Uh, are you going to remember though? It seems like you're not going to remember. I feel like it's really far. Oh, I almost had squi- he's squinting really hard for listeners. And now he's holding his, his face in the screen pose. The Edward Munch uh, the, screen pose. No, but... <laughs> and now he's got his head in his hands. Now he's plucking it... his beard. Okay, now I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It was Lady, Lady, something what? Lady, something with no, Lady in the name. There was something no. with Lady in the name. Okay, look, no, if I look up at my music right now, I think you're making that up. Lady, no, Our Lady Peace. Oh, okay. I liked Our Lady Peace in elementary school actually quite a bit. Well, you brought up Our Lady Peace, and there was uh, <laughs> was it yeah, okay. Was it Innocent? Uh, Innocent? No, I don't like that song that much. I like their older stuff better. Okay, but I wasn't like, crazy. You were talking about how you like. No, Our you Lady weren't Peace. crazy. When you said lady, I was hey. like, there's no way this is correct. <laughs> yeah, I liked Our Lady Peace when I was in. Actually, I liked that a lot when we were in what you guys would call middle school, maybe like grade seven. Right, because in middle school in Canada, at least where we were yeah. from. Yeah. Okay, so this you have a quote. So I was thinking, because when we talked about muses and we were talking about scheduling last episode, so I was thinking of this quote from Stephen King's classic book on writing, Ooh, Stephen uh, King. A Memoir of the Craft. So it was pretty good. Oh my God, um, I actually read a Stephen King. I think I this book? I read this. Yeah? Was it this one or was it? It's a it, classic. It's been another, out since 1992. One? On writing? I don't think so. He did it. Yeah, Stephen though. King on writing. He did a... This is literally uh, called on writing. Oh, that's the one on writing. Yeah. So you read this. Wow, I found the one book that you read. Yeah, I actually read this. And she, even though I've read like no Stephen King books. I, well, I, so that's the thing, me neither. I've I just read this. Um, 
because I don't really like horror very much. Maybe you're the one who inspired me to read it at the time. Who knows? Perhaps, although I only really read it recently, but okay. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. So he talks about muse. So he says there is a muse. And then <laughs> he says, traditionally, the muses were women, but mine's a guy. I'm afraid we'll just have to live with that. So there is a muse, but he's not going to come fluttering down into your writing room and scatter creative fairy dust all over your typewriter or computer station. He lives in the ground. He's a basement guy. You have to descend to his level. And once you get down there, you have to furnish an apartment for him to live in. You have to do all the grunt labor, in other words, while the muse sits and smokes cigars and admires his bowling trophies and pretends to ignore you. Do you think this is fair? I think it's fair. He may not be much to look at, that muse guy. And he may not be much of a conversationalist. What I get out of mine is mostly surly grunts, unless he's on duty. But he's got the inspiration. It's right that you should do all the work and burn all the midnight oil, because the guy with the cigar and the little wings has got a bag of magic. There's stuff in there that can change your life. Oh, that's so good. And he says, believe me, I know, yeah. Ah, oh, so good. That's and good, I do eh? remember reading that, actually. Interesting. Oh, okay. This is like the only time this is ever going to happen. You read a quote from a book, and I read that book. Yeah. Oh man, yes. So, do you do you feel like you have a specific muse or different ones at different times? Um, no. I mean, so like then he continues later talking about how you need to have kind of like a space where you, and he says like don't wait for the muse. You have to. Your job is to like make sure the muse knows where you're going to be every day, by like writing every day or by being mm. there every. So I don't know that I have a muse. I like I have a space where I like to write. Um, but really for me that like actually getting things done is more about habit than about inspiration because I mean if you wait for inspiration you'll never well you'll write in very little oh my god that's so important to say did we not even say this because yeah it's pretty important right it's very because I I do know a lot of by the way this book I I would recommend it too because it inspired yeah, me nice. on Stephen King's on writing but uh yeah it's very important when talking about inspiration because I think there are a lot of people out there, let's say writers or creators that wait to work. They wait until they're inspired. But if you just wait until you're inspired, you may be waiting for a very long time. Yeah. And you might eventually finish the thing you're working on, but it could take all your life or it could yeah. take a good chunk of it. And if you actually want to do this thing, let's say as a job, or you want to have a bigger output, let's say, the goal isn't to just work when you're inspired sometimes you have to work and by working then the inspiration comes that's exactly you want... can I tie it into the end of this yeah okay because I think I, I thought that and then I read it in the book and then I was like ah Stephen King thinks the way I do yeah no it's it's honestly it's really great um it's really great uh advice I think so I it's a little long but so this is later after he talks about schedule and like figuring out what you're gonna do he says, don't wait for the muse. As I've said, he's a hard-headed guy who's not susceptible to a lot of creative fluttering. This isn't the Ouija board or the spirit world we're talking about here, but just another job like laying pipe or driving long haul trucks. Your job is to make sure the muse knows where you're going to be every day from nine till noon or seven till three. If he does know, I assure you that sooner or later, he'll start showing up, chomping his cigar and making his magic. Boom. The wise words of Stephen King. That's pretty wise. Yeah. So I guess you don't have a muse. <laughs> I guess not. Um, I don't think so. No, have I don't. Do you ever have one? A, what do you mean, a like specific? a person or like an idea? That's, of that's what we hear about in movies, right? We hear like there's. Yeah, this I don't person have a muse. No. Some, you, the, the, the typical muse is like that. You see that like chiseled writer with the cigar, and there's this woman that's like yeah. his muse, you know. Yeah, I hate that. He always falls that's back sure. on. Yeah, that's not necessarily what a muse is, right? It doesn't, or has yeah. to be. Well, uh, yeah. There was a time, I think, when I was, you know, really into somebody. And it, I remember, you know, when this thing was going well, this relationship, the beginning of it, whatever. I got super, super inspired to, like, mm. write, like, 20, 30 pages. But were you inspired by the person or were you inspired by the feeling that that person gave you? It's a good question. Because I don't think it's, I don't think you should attach that to any person. I think it's the feeling itself. I mean, I think I don't think I differentiated. I you're right. I don't I I didn't because it's not like I can't do that anymore. I think it was that feeling and I don't think I need that I definitely don't need that yeah. person anymore to to right. get that feeling. But, you know, if a person helps you get that feeling, great. If it if it's an experience, you know, that helps you get it, you know, all the power to you. That's like 
a more positive thing, but also if it's a negative experience, then use whatever. I mean, I'm not sure it's called the muse at that point, but use whatever you can from your own life to, yeah. to that inspiration to actually to create. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You want to start wrapping this thing yeah, up? Yeah, let's. I had fun. And that's why I had I, a lot of fun. Good. Can I say something? You, yeah. you, you've inspired me, Aya. Oh, you know, you mentioned so nice. me at one point and I didn't, uh, you know, oh, I didn't so you're just yeah, reciprocating just because I'm, re- I'm not just reciprocating. I mean, even recently, like we, like this, this podcast in particular, like we were talking about habits and routines. Mm-hmm. This is actually important to note, like what in somebody else is, is so inspirational, right? You have like, as you said, kind of like a dedication and obsession with like, scheduling and planning and that kind of thing right <laughs> i do not have a dedication to, well maybe I, do. I think you use the word obsession, obsession. i'm just right using word. your word obsession is um, the correct word yes yeah. <laughs> you know but you and you make that work and you 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 kind of exude how much it's positively influenced your life mm. so that kind of excitement that you have for it and the fact that it has helped you so much is inspiring to me yeah. right and okay. I start thinking about ways how I can incorporate some of that into my life because clearly I'm not as good a scheduler and planner right so you inspired oh, me to great. be more you know especially even in the the ways I I think my next grocery list I'm probably not just gonna I think I'm actually gonna update it a new one you're gonna <laughs> yeah you're gonna write a whole new one not yeah, just recycle you, the you old in, stuff you inspired oh me God. to do that wow yeah that's wonderful you know? I'm so happy and you also inspired this podcast to begin with. I mean, I said, let's, yeah, okay, let's go with that. I mean, that was a two-way <laughs> true. street, but sure. I'll take you came up with the title Adulthood Friends, which inspired a lot of conversation as well. Mm, thank you. Well, that's really nice. Thanks, Josh. I mean, the title, we went back and forth for a while, and I don't think I can take full credit when it was like the product of us talking I'm giving, for a while. It's yours. It's your credit. I mean, you I'll said, take you, it. You, but You came right. up with it. It's yours. And I was just thinking about it, like the people that have, that really are inspired, like we'll see these videos online. You ever see like, they're super inspiring, like. Mm, That's an emotional spoiler. If they tell you that it's inspirational, it's like, let me figure out if it's inspirational. Is it? I guess it depends. Like sometimes there's like an inspirational sort of page. I was misusing that word. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. It's okay. No, no. So like, you know, you'll see somebody who was like, they broke every bone in their body. And they couldn't walk, and but then somehow they, you know, through sheer force of will, mm-hmm. now they're walking again. And you're like, wow, that is inspiring. Or, yeah. you know, somebody who stuttered all their life, giving yeah. an amazing speech. And you start to realize it's part of it is overcoming something, right? It's very mm-hmm. inspiring to us when people have a challenge and they overcome it. So when we see how other people overcome their challenge, challenges, we can be inspired to mm-hmm. overcome ours. That's so true. Right? Yeah. that's that's the positivity about it right it's right. it's someone you know when we say it would be so easy to to not do something but somebody else managed to do it oftentimes mm. that's called it's opening the door right that's why we say these these filmmakers these musicians or whatever mm. sometimes they're heroes to us because they opened this door they basically said hey it's possible yeah and that's what's inspiring to us right so yeah I just, that's great more, and i more musings I like it. And does it even have to be a real person? Because I, I mean, I see movies with fictional characters oh. and that's good enough for me. Yeah, that's, a, that's also interesting to say, like when fictional characters get, can inspire yeah. you as well, because it's true. We can't necessarily say they actually did that thing. It's in a fictional world, but it opens up our mind to the possibility. It's one of the reasons art and, you know, writing and creative endeavors can be so important I I don't think it's a waste of time necessarily to watch a show or 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 read a book or you know some people think who's saying it is no no that can be super inspirational I just like I said Stargate SG-1 has been inspirational to me Harry Potter was inspiring to you right and that's why it's important to act on those inspirations too because you could be the creator of something that inspires someone else yeah you know uh I don't know if I told you did I tell you this I I got invited back to my undergrad. Oh, um, that's so cool. Like to be a, a talker? A yeah, to give a talk, talker. like a, to give a speech. Yeah. Actually, they posted my my face on all these what? flyers and, and they posted it all around the university. Cool. Well, what's interesting is they didn't invite me back to talk about neuroscience. You know, they wanted you to talk about film. Oh, is, I was there or I wasn't there. 
but I Wait. was there at one of your premiere or one of the was this when you came back for the film festival I don't know um, I remember what, this was one of the times you came back to London and you talked to me about it was this. one so of the yes, times exactly. you did tell me about it London. I don't know why I don't know if you were there at that, that specific one or not I wasn't there at that specific I just met yeah. you at some point during that yeah. we saw each other I think during that time. yeah yeah we probably got Vietnamese food and talked about probably writing. yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no this was actually a huge like it was very interesting because they didn't, again, they didn't bring me back to talk about the thing I did while I was there at that yeah. university. Mm. You know, I, I went into film kind of despite that university because they didn't have a film program, like a filmmaking program. Right. Yeah. If I wanted to make movies and I wanted to, you know, make TV shows and, and write and all that stuff, I kind of had to do it outside of school. Right. They didn't really give you the the structure to do that there mm. so I would kind of do it despite the school right mm. I overcame that challenge you might say mm. of not having you know an easy path to do that so when I got into USC which is supposed to be the quote-unquote best film school in the world and you know moved to LA and started doing this here I mean it was noticed I guess and so they're like oh come talk to these kids and maybe inspire them which is very Mm -hmm. strange to me because the university itself doesn't actually give a program but that's also why I think though having to overcome that challenge Mm. for me also made me better at what I do cool so yeah it was interesting that that's one of the reasons I could be, I guess, this inspiration to some other people. And uh, people did come up to me afterwards and be like, how did you do it? Like, I want to do something like that. And I do remember at the time when I was at my undergrad, I didn't have a a guide. I didn't have somebody close to me who had done this that I could look to. Mm. I kind of had, I was doing all this research and kind of guessing a little bit Mm. about what I should be doing. And in some ways, I feel like I was just fortunate that this worked out, but you know, like, I kind of did the math in my head and it made sense. But here, because I actually did it, I can make it maybe a little easier for somebody else. That was, I guess, an example where I could be help inspire somebody else. So I think as we get older and we succeed in certain ways, we can then inspire other people to follow in our steps. Yeah, well, that's great. And I hope uh, I hope you guys can share with us the way that's, that you're inspired. You can even comment. Oh, yeah. Our, feel free to comment <laughs> with your inspirations or your favorite shows, <laughs> since that seems to be like what <laughs> some of what we talked about, um, or your heroes, things like that. And um, yeah, this has been another episode of Adulthood Friends. Thank you for joining Adulthood us. Adulthood Friends. Yeah. I just like and, saying it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, where can, uh, where can people and find us? I was just about to say where they could find us. That's a good question, Josh. Um, so they can find us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, really wherever you like to listen, as all podcasts like to tell you. It also helps if you like subscribe and stuff. That way we get more listeners. And I mean, do it if you feel like it. It also inspires us it to, does, to, 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 to do like, more content when we know true. people are listening. Like you guys inspire us. That's true. So we get really there. excited. We're like, oh my God, people subscribe. Exactly. Yeah, we have a Facebook page there. And actually, that's where you'll get a lot of these updates um, there and on Instagram as well. And eventually on Twitter, which I'm responsible for, which is (laughs) why it's terrible. Uh, Um, Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thanks again. And um, I think we have a way that we end this. I think one of us just talks or. Yeah, yeah. One of us is just talking. I think the music just suddenly. drinking a bottle of water today so that's different yeah look at that giant bottle of water do you drink only bottled water no yeah this is really interesting stuff Uh, yeah well you're gonna (laughs) edit out most of it please oh am i i don't know we'll see oh wait is this no this is the one no i'll be i'll be editing this one yeah right 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 right. okay we'll make it quick so you won't have too much to edit. <laughs> well, now and that you said everyone. that, you know this will be eight hours long. All right. No, it's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. And everybody, I know everyone has been wanting a normal-sized episode, a normal-length episode. 
Hey, so I don't gonna, know. I don't know. Who, do I don't know who this everyone is. I don't know. I just imagine there are people like, what is taking two hours? But then yeah. they listen. So what can yeah. you say? 